Welcome along to this live stream of Farnham Town versus Jersey Bulls. Big, big game at the top of the table tonight. Farnham looking to edge closer to the league title, but they don't get much tougher than this as far as tests at the Memorial Ground, especially without Daryl Sanders. Jersey with a good result at Nap Hill just over a week ago. We'll be confident coming here tonight. I've got Harry Hugo alongside me. Hello, and hello. It's probably some nerves here. For you, know, you don't maybe say that very often, but tonight with Jersey, a great side coming here, there probably are some nerves. Absolutely. Um, it, it, it's one of those games that you look, you look at the, uh, the, the fixture list, the schedule at the start of the season to see when you're going to host Jersey and when you're going to go away. And, um, and, and it's our turn to host this time and we, and we go to their place in a month's time. Very similar sort of timeline to, to what we faced last season actually with, with Jersey, despite our hosting coming in the first game of the season. But yeah, they're a good team. They're a really good team. Um, They've had, a, they've had a funny run of results, so is what I'd say. That really, really good win away at Nap Hill, which I was at. So it was a lovely half 12 kickoff before we played at Collier's Wood. But they, uh, the last seven days, they've, they've taken two draws away at Fleet and then at home to Camberley, which are two games you'd have probably penciled them in for wins. So, you know, they'll be looking at this as a, you know, almost a must win for them is like to continue that, that momentum into the playoffs. You know, that playoff picture is. is uh, it's far from sewn up so you know at the same time as it's a bit of a free hit and lots of people will be looking at it as a free hit it is important for jersey to keep the points coming in um from a farnham perspective it's about keeping those points ticking in and, and trying to get this league wrapped up as, as early as we possibly can especially with postpone as postponements um in in the uh, in the mouths of everybody at the moment because we we struggled to get the game on on saturday and then even this one was tough. And then you look at Saturday's forecast coming up against Tooting and Mitchum. And uh, I'm worried about that one as well. So it's about getting games in at the moment, Ben. And uh, that isn't easy. Yeah, we're really pleased that this one's going ahead tonight. We've been looking forward to this one for a long time. We're all looking forward to the trip away to Jersey in a few weeks as well. But a big job to be done tonight as Ryan Kinane gets ready to lead the players out. Welcome along to this coverage of Farnham Town versus Jersey Bulls in the combined county south. First versus third. Lining up for Farnham tonight is Ingol Patnash. In defense, it's Max Meaton, Jack Dean, Ryan Kinane, and Joe Jackson. There's a midfield partnership of Lamar Caroma and Harry Cooksley. And in the attacking positions, Owen Dean and Dean Rule are in behind Shamal Edwards and Adam Liddell. On the bench, it's Charlie Postance, Kai Tanner, Tom Smith, Lewis Flatman, and a new face, Mark Waters. Yeah, new signing in amongst the action already. Um, obviously not starting, but I'd be very shocked if we don't see him get on the pitch at some point tonight or win the number four for us uh, this season. But a strong start 11 for Farnham Town, obviously missing Sanders, who uh, you'd see him starting if he was fit. But other than that, almost full strength, I'd say. And I'll give you the Jersey team as well. In goal, it's Piers Roche, then it's JJ Lloyd, Fergus Boyle, Harry Curtis, Ben LaRouche Tell, Luke Watson, Fraser Barlow, Adam Trotter, Lorne Bickley, Johnny Lacane, and Miguel Carvalho on the bench, Kilshaw, Mendes, Lekamamati, and Sutcliffe for the visitors. Yeah, a lot of good players in this Jersey team. Um, we really like Miguel Carvalho, who'll play out on the left-hand side. It'll be a really good battle between him and Jack Dean, who has been moved to right back tonight after playing a few games at centre-back. I really like Watson uh, and Trotter. In, in the middle. Um, Barlow will play out on the right and Bickley will be down the middle in a, in a classic sort of 4-3-3 for Jersey. Um, Bickley obviously the star man for them. Wears the captain's armband tonight and um, came on for five minutes to go to try and chase a winner at home to Campbell. He probably weren't expecting to have to use him uh, when he was recovering from that injury that he picked up celebrating the goal away at Nap Hill. But he starts tonight and he will be the threat and a, and a threat that Farnham will look to quell with their strength at the back. I was speaking to Frankie Hobbs on the way here, obviously a familiar face for Farnham fans, and he was saying that Jersey like to play possession football all the time and uh, when teams play against them, they know their back's going to be against the ball and they're not going to see a lot of the ball. But with Farnham, you know, obviously liking plenty of the ball as well, how do you think that's going to mesh in terms of styles making fights here? That is what's going to be interesting. Last time we played Jersey, they dominated possession. Uh, we were a very direct, different side. This side under Jono is obviously a possession-based team. 
and um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see who dominates possession over the course of this 90 minutes. I love this uh, jersey kit, by the way. As do I. It's sort of a Crystal Palace slash Dulwich Hamlet thing going on. Yeah, I like it. With a bit I like of Syria. It. Yeah, Syria Kappa. Well. Yeah, they look the part. They jersey. Do. Can't deny them that. And uh, I hear that many of their fans, some Liverpool fans from Jersey that have stuck around after being at the Carabao Cup final on Sunday are here with us tonight, so that's nice. There's Jersey. Yep. Give away a throw in early on. Yeah, it'll be one of those games, see who settles in first. Uh, Farnham will obviously look to get their foot on the ball, as will Jersey, but it will be a test for Farnham um, and probably the one of the most clinical forwards in the league in, in Lawn Bickley and Farnham have given away a few chances in, the, in recent weeks so it'll be about how they can defend against those. Here's Cavallio. Jack Dean at right back tonight. He, usually you'd see him and Meaton the other way around but Meaton's in at centre back with Dean given the task of looking after Cavallio. Yeah, well we, we identify Cavallio as a, as a key threat. Um, you know, I think it's, it's clear as a few players slip there. Bickley looking to make the most of that. Loose touch there from Watson. And away by Meaton, who will just look to keep things simple. Yeah, I mean, a few early slips there. You know, very obvious to people that the last week or so has not been kind to pitches around non-league. And uh, ours is exactly in that, in that situation as well. And there will be cutting up. It's really good work from Owen Dean. Uh, and he will get the free kick for the earlier foul there. Vintage Owen Dean. Usually you see him doing that in opposition territory. Now he's having to help out defensively. But he's still happy to dribble his way out of trouble. He's, he's so good at that, isn't he, Dino? I think one thing that he needs to get better at is understanding when he needs to release the ball um, because that was an opportunity to do it. But that's a great, great pass from Ryan Canane. Yeah, inch perfect for Jack Dean, who takes it in a stride and does get the delivery in. It is high and dealt with, but only momentarily. Here's Dean Rule. And now Joe Jackson at left back. Cooksley with the new haircut on that very uh, difficult area of the pitch there. Yeah, an area of the pitch that's sandy just to get this game on. It was very, very wet only 48 hours ago. And we're delighted that this referee saw a bit of sense and we did the work to, uh, to get this on. Huge amount of credit to the ground staff and people that gave up their time in order to make this ground playable. Another searching ball over the top and Dean Rule in front of the new touch. stand. Dean Rule cuts into the penalty area. Twisting and turning, Dean Rule and finding Harry Cooksley. He's never afraid to shoot from distance, but thinks better of it this time. Here's Dean. And now Liddle turns. Maybe looking to create a yard for himself and miscommunication between him and Karoma as Kanane comes across to help out Max Meaton and prevent Lorne Bickley from getting an opportunity. Yeah, it was very good from Ryan. Saw the danger, mopped up. Um, but there's going to be chances like that with Jersey looking to, to, to break. Um, but Farnham looked good there. Again, a few of the poor, poor passes in the final third. But this is, seems to be the, the tactic. Yeah, Jack Dean again the target. He can get up and down that right flank. He's a very fit athlete. Finds Owen Dean and his touch let him down. Brother to brother combination there didn't quite come off for Farnham. Yeah, they're struggling, Jersey, to defend that cross-field pass. It's been pinpoint three times so far from Ryan Canane. First of all to Jack Dean, then across to Dean Rule. And again, Jack Dean causing problems from this right-back area, as we've like, you know, rightly identified. As, as good as Carvalho is below us, from an attacking sense, he's not going to track back. Roche lofts it forward. Owen Dean challenging. And Harry Cooksley in there. Farnham do well to come out of that one, but the ball forward is spooned a little bit by Jack Dean. What a frantic Fergus. start for both teams. Fergus Boyle at left back for Jersey tonight. Dean happy to head that one out. 300 of you watching along online, thank you very much. Shame you couldn't make it down to the memorial ground, but we will see you, I'm sure, at some point during the season. But thank you for very, very much for watching along online. Touch there from Curtis. Jersey go all the way back. Just won't want to play in that area at all. 
And the touch there from Barlow. He's seen one or two loose touches from the players tonight. I wonder if that's to do with the, uh, the surface. Like you say, it's a miracle that the game's on, really. Incredible job, considering how the pitch was looking at the weekend. And the rain we've had since. Cavallio, nice meeting and again, does Mille. its job. It's not completely alien to him playing at centre-back. No, we, we've seen him, well, he started the season there, really, with uh, Guy Hollis's injury, forces into changes early on. Wow, that's a long throw. Uh, and uh, Max Meaton was uh, Ryan's partner for a long time uh, until we had more fullback problems and he had to, uh, to go and cover out there. And Joe Jackson, that's really when he started to become a fullback option for us and he's been brilliant ever since. It's not been what you'd call a settled back four all season for Farnham. Not at all. But they've managed to keep plenty of clean sheets as the ball comes in. It's coming to a dangerous area and nobody really attacking it on the edge of the box, which is a relief for Farnham. Cooksley looking to find Shamal Edwards, who will pick it up here from the Boyle header. Shamal Edwards looking to drive out Boyle. That's good, though. Throw into Farnham. It was good from Shamal Edwards. That's what you want to see him doing, running at defenders, causing trouble, kicking the ball beyond them, making them turn. That's what he's in the team for, and he did it well there. Jack Dean just waiting for an option here. Here's Cooksley. And Dean and Harry Cooksley again. Good turn Sold from him. him. Such a creative player, Harry Cooksley. And a decent cross aimed at Dean Rule. Just beaten to her there by JJ Lloyd. And Cavallio has acres of space if he can be found. Instead, it's Bickley. Done well there, Bickley. Good possession this from Jersey. Here's Watson. And a, the shot is across the face of goal. Cavalier's at the back post. Great take from Pat Nash, though. Fortunate, really, for Farnham that nobody was hacking that six yard box. Came all the way through to Cavalier, who the angle was very tight for. It was a really nice move from Jersey. Um, Bickley did well, pulled out to that side. Um, pinned pinned Kenane, opened up a bit of space in behind him, knocked it around. And it was a lovely touch actually to get them into the box. I think it was Trotter who was breaking in. And uh, his, his sh cross come shot wasn't enough to be turned in at the back post, but Pat Nash did well in the end. Yeah, very competitive start here at the Memorial Ground. This is what we want to see. I'm sure it's what you guys on the stream want to see as well. Yeah, it's been a good start. Good start. Again, Cavalier the target. And again, Jack Dean tracking him. And Cavalier just tried to turn around Dean there, but lost his footing. Adam Little, great, great touch. touch from him. Harry Cooksley. So aware of what's around him. Owen Dean, but we see him going one of those mazy runs again. Well defended and the Jersey Bulls fans down below us enjoyed that one. Yeah, I think about 20, 25 Jersey fans had stayed in the UK, in the mainland UK, um, with that Liverpool game that you, that you mentioned, and, uh, and that's seen a, a nice contingent come, come to Farnham tonight. Clipped around the corner there by Watson, but Kinane read the danger. Meaton, again looking for that it's ball over ball. the top, and Edwards is the one closest to it. Just skidded past him. Clear what Farnham are trying to do, trying to... Owen Dean going in, Jack Dean likewise. Forward it goes to Bickley, who holds it up well, and they're now looking for Cavallio, but just couldn't quite find the pass. Yeah, I think it's quite clear what both teams are trying to do, really. You know, obviously, Jersey are trying to find Bickley with every 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 time they get the ball. Um, central point and kind of roll off him. Farnham are looking down this right-hand side. At some point, that will open up a huge amount of space to the left-hand side for Dean Rule. And I imagine that's when they'll start to play. I've seen lots of throwing so far. As a, as a result of what you're talking about, lots of... Oh, down our side. Over well. the top. Oh, down our side. Boyle trying to steal a few yards. 
down below us. We also have to give a huge amount of credit to the referee uh, who has worked with us over the course of the last 24 hours to get this game on and worked incredibly hard to come down to the ground, kept doing checks, um, knew that we had to work differently with, uh, with an Ireland team coming over. So huge amount of credit to him for getting this game on too. Was actually used some common sense, which is rare at this level. Yeah, it's nice to be able to praise referees. Have plenty of the opposite. Absolutely. Hopefully he has a good game to boot. <laughs> yeah, we're giving him a big setup. <laughs> 377 of you uh, watching along. Thank you very much. It's a big game. Whipped in by Cavallio. It's a decent free kick. It was. I think it was uh, Dean who got underneath it. And a good battle on the far side, which Joe Jackson wins. Oof. But uh, Barlow might have another opportunity. And they have managed to work it out. Really good from Jersey. Flag stays down. Still in That's play over there. Gone out finally. Johnny back in. Johnny Lots of interesting back in. battles all over the park. There's been some nice play from Johnny both teams. Um, it's, it's a lot more high quality than when I went to go and watch Jersey away at Nap Hill where that first half was so scrappy. It was all played in this middle area. No one really could get the ball forward and make it stick and make any sort of moves. It's been much better than that from both teams. Dean hooks it away. And uh, Dean Rule dropping back in to help out. Allows Farnham some time on the ball and they look straight for that ball across to the right-hand side, but Cavallio beats Owen Dean in the air. Yeah, I'm not sure you'll see that many times this evening, but Cavallio did well there. Over the top from Curtis. And again, just not quite seeing the accuracy with these balls over the top when they are attempted from either side, really. Yeah, Kane had a few that came off perfectly in the first sort of two or three minutes, but since then, um, you know, the, the both teams have kind of realised that that's going to be a tactic and dropped off, forced a longer ball. And, uh, and, and managed to defend them very easily. Pat Nash aiming for that right-hand side. Owen Dean goes up and wins the flick this time. Almost found its way to Lidl, who will chase after it, but... Well, that was a foul, I think, by Cavallo on Dean. They he just pushed him, didn't he? Um, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that there wasn't a foul given on Max Meaton only a moment prior, but clear that Cavallo just pushed Jack Dean uh, in order to get to the ball. Jackson. I haven't seen a lot of this so far from Farnham, just knocking the ball side to side. Probably the most stereotypically, didn't like that, <laughs> stereotypically Farnham. Play. Boyle. And now Curtis. Lloyd. They'll be looking to drive forward. That's really well. And it's a good move again here by Jersey. Lamar did really well to stop it. Down the line it goes. Bickley is pulled out into a wide area. Left a lot of vacant space in the middle, Jersey. Edwards, Edwards did well. Edwards did well, competed. Harry Cooks, they're calling for it and getting it from Jackson. Very assured touch from the midfielder. A lot of the creative burden will be on him with Sanders' absence. Nice, that was a chance. Jack Dean. And again, just couldn't quite link up with Owen Dean. Yeah, poor, poor in the end. Um, chance just to keep the ball in, in that area and can't make it stick. Meaton just uses his body there and shields it back to Kanane, but good touch again by Watson. Good from the mark. Time now for Owen Dean. Oh, he's looking for Edwards, but just muscled out of it. And they'll aim for Bickley. Meaton, happy that's to good. just that's good. send it forward. 
Adam Little might pick up the scraps here. He's here, he's in Adam Little and prodded it goalwards. Good battle there from the striker. Give him a goal kick. Yeah, I think it just bounced back off a little. Came off a hell of a lot of pace. I thought the defender just kicked it out. Little did really well. As soon as Max Meatham gets the ball, he's happy to just loft it up towards Edwards. Well, it's those second balls. We talk about it every single every single week. But if Edwards can can compete um, and make um, make the Jersey players hit it, you know they're, they're going to make mistakes. And it's about Little, Dean, and and Rawley getting into those areas and, and picking up the pass. Kroma one out there, and Edwards was tugged, I thought, by Larouge Tell. Poor poor touch from Lamarca Roma. Lacane. Chance here for Jersey. Yeah, JJ Lloyd getting forward and Rule having to track back. The ball comes in, it's a good one. Meaton heads away. Danger not over yet though. Cavallo. And Owen Dean defending well and maybe Farnham can break. Owen Dean has done a huge amount of defensive work so far. Uh, just to get in front of the, the man before the shot or to break up play just on the edge of his own penalty area. Really good. Dean. That's good Looking as well. For Edwards. And he might get to this one. Smile Edwards. The goalkeeper came out and read the danger. Edwards had the beating of his man. And uh, Bickley nudged Dean there. I think it was a foul. Yeah. The test is innocence. He didn't jump for it, did he, Bickley? Um, he's the bigger man, but he didn't jump for it. Uh, Owen was there underneath it, planted. Did well, actually, to, to get his head on it and, and uh, draw the foul. Meaton and Harry Cooksley. Arundine again dropping into a deep position, waiting to receive the ball. Wonder if Kameen will look over to the left hand side this time. Instead, he finds Dean Rule. Cooksley. Dean this area. Meaton. And it just, just bobbled. bobbled up, exactly. Shouldn't let that affect his confidence because he has started well, Meaton. Difficult task for him tonight. And the clock end find their voice. A few of those so far where you just haven't got perfect contact on it. Um, and, a, and a lot of the ball has been on this near touchline to us. Decent little crowd in here for a Tuesday night. All the way around the ground. Meaton's header. And uh, Karoma's touch. Adam Little looked to just flick it round to Dean Rule there. Just didn't get any contact on it, really. And now Jersey looking to exploit that right flank. With and they're all coming into the box late. Lloyd. Past Dean Rule and looking for the cane. Karoma trying to shield it out and he's brought down. That's actually well. going to be a goal kick. Does well. If there's one thing that Mark Karoma does really, really well is how he uses his body, both in the middle, in, that, in those defensive areas, just gets just gets in the way. Yeah, he'll be determined tonight, Lamar Karoma, with the addition of Waters to the Farnham side. We want to keep him out of the team. Yeah, and he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant this season, Lamar Karoma. Um, Waters probably brings a bit of a different sort of playing more of a ball player in there. It's almost like a hybrid between a Cooksey and a and a Karoma. Um, but you're right, he will be he'll be looking to get you know in that starting eleven waters. So you know he's been starting every week at set three. Foul there on the Kane. Yeah we were very impressed with Waters when uh, Kingstonian came here a couple of weeks ago in the Surrey Cup. So a real coup. For Farnham, yeah, I mean, you, you go onto their forums and on the on the, on their fans' Twitter accounts, you can see that he was a beloved player for them. Probably going to be the player of the year at Kingstonian this year, and obviously their captain. So, uh, a really, really important signing for us and a good one, and one that we can also look to next season for. Booted away. <laughs> one of those you don't want to be underneath on a Tuesday night. Yeah, brave header from the Rouge Tell. What's a header? Comes though from Rule. Here's Jackson. It's raining out there. 
Dean. Touch just got away from him, as did Jack Dean's tackle, and he flew in on Cavallio, but fairly. Lots of players struggling with that touch. Cooksley, one of the best touches you'll see. Here he is, Harry Cooksley. Done well, done well. Made something out of nothing there, Harry Cooksey. But that rain is not something we want to see continuously over the next 45 minutes or so. The pitch, I'm just not sure how much it can handle. <laughs> I'm really, really not. I'm really, really not. I'm just getting, I'm getting the weather forecast up. Hold on. But the first corner of the game for Farnham. I wonder if it might take a set piece to carve out a real, first real clear opportunity for them. In it comes from Cooksley. Goes into a good area. Kenane Ooh. looking to hook it back in with his left foot. Couple of good chances there for Farnham. Um, I think it was Jack Dean who rose really well. Probably Adam Little around him as well, but just fell to Kenane. But you want it falling on his right foot, not his left. Swing and a miss. Uh, he hasn't stayed forward. So, uh, Meter works it across to Jack Dean. And it's a poor pass from Jack Dean. Sort of caught into your minds, maybe over to look for. Really, really good from Max Meaton. Really, really good. Meaton looking over the top for Edwards, who gets up. And again, it's that second ball. Little went in for, but Watson came out on top. He's started pretty well, Luke Watson. I think both teams have been really good here. The, the tempo's been good. Um, it, it's felt like a, a game at a higher level than step five, that's for sure. Two very good squads going at it, um, with very few players missing. And at this stage in the season, you, you, you're shocked to see two pretty much full-strength sides at the top of the table going at it. Pat Nash assesses his options, goes short to Kenane. Wasn't expecting it there, Brian Kenane. You've heard uh, Paul Johnson and Jimmy Hibbert shout do it on several occasions when the centre-backs have had the ball and they're Ooh. looking over the top for... Didn't love that one. Edwards. I didn't love that one. Yeah, they're, they're looking for this run of Edwards and Owen Dean. Good touch from Max Meaton. Owen Dean. Nice crisp pass into Harry Cooksley who returns the favour. Great touch. Owen Dean looking to... Now he's got to release it. Good work, really, from Jersey to prevent an attacking situation. But that's a great pass and great a great touch. touch. Jackson. Not such a great touch from him. Poor, poor. And they've they've got, got a huge amount of space on this side. Cavalier again was busting a gut to get forward. That is, that is the issue Farnham will have with this system. Adam Little. Gets a shot off, it was a tame effort, but he did well to win his battle there, Adam Little. That will give him encouragement. Yeah, like, like I said, the, the the system means that wingers will get chances. With the fullbacks bombing on, like you see Jack Dean in front of us, probably more so than Joe Jackson on the left-hand side, because it's more natural for him. Um, there will be some loose play there from Jersey. Uncharacteristic from what we've seen from them so far. Jack Dean quickly down the line towards Owen Dean. And now have another throw. In fact, no, it'll go Jersey's way. No real clear cut chances as we move past the halfway point of the first half. But it's a good battle between two clubs at the very top of the table. Meaton going in. Cooksley just hesitated. Yeah, he didn't want to raise his foot. And that allowed Jersey to. Clip it up towards Cavalier. Really good from... Oh, Jesus. I, you're, if you've listened to me commentate before, you know how much I hate those first-time passes from uh, from goalkeepers on these pitches. Rule. Love to have more of an influence on this game, Dean Rule. Yeah, he's probably not seen the ball enough. That's a great knock, though, isn't it? Dean might get to this one from Kinane. It was inch perfect from the captain, and it's clipped into a dangerous area, but nobody really attacking it which will frustrate both Kane and Dean, who worked so well to create that opening. Yeah, I mean, there were, no one was going to get it in, instead of the goalkeeper there, but, yeah, you, you want to see 
far and forwards flooding into the box when the ball when the ball gets in that. It's another win in the air there for Meaton. The flag was up against Bickley anyway, but Meaton not shying away from the task. Yeah, and, and it's clear Lorne Bickley is pulling away onto Meaton. Obviously the smaller of the two, naturally probably uh, a, a better fit as a battle between Kenane and, and Bickley, but Bickley's using his experience going for the shorter man with Max Meaton. But that does mean that Ryan Kenane's there to mop up if needed. Meaton. Now Cooksley quickly releases to Kenane, who can maybe pick out another long pass and set up to find Meaton. That's a lovely ball there good. across to Jackson, who has plenty of space on that left flank. And he's got support. Here's Karoma. Cooksey has a lot of space. Loads of space. Harry Cooksey might let fly. Oh, indeed, might. He just looked to clip it through to Edwards. Maybe one pass too many. Because there was plenty of space. Farnham maybe been guilty a little bit this season of trying to create the perfect chance. That pass though from Max Meaton was probably the first pass in the whole match that's cut the midfield out of the game. That's a good touch there from Jackson. Getting forward a bit more now. Karoma, Cooksey showing for it. Yeah, Jersey have been so used to Farnham attacking down this right-hand side that Jackson's actually been afforded a bit of space. Edwards chasing after it and getting there. That's really well. Rule. Oh. Cut it's on his heels there, Roy. Not, not sure he was expecting Edwards to, to keep it in, but That's they have a good huge work by and he, The pass didn't need that much weight on it. And that's not got enough on it from Owen Dean. And they're looking around the corner. Kanane has some defending to do, which he does. Meaton gets it away. Farnham need to hold it. They need yeah. to hold it when they get into those attacking areas. Little and Edwards need to hold the ball better. You just sense it's beginning to open up a little bit. Here's Cavallio. Yeah, both Boyle teams. getting forward. And uh, it just bobbled up on Meaton. Here's Cavallio. <laughs> Harry Cooksey, very alert there. And now finally to get forward. Jackson obliges with some support for Dean Rule, who cuts back in and looking for Edwards. Clever. Clipped over the top really well there by Dean Rule. The first time cross into a good area. Again, no one attacking it. And it's safe in Roche's hands. Good day from Farnham. You know, broke away. It was a nice run from Shamal Edwards. He probably had a bit more time than he, than he gave himself. Used the used left foot to clip it up. It was actually a really good ball in. It was, uh, but it evaded both Farnham forwards that got into the box. Cooksley flicks it on, and there's a clash of heads there. And it's Cooksley who's come off worst. I think Watson clattered him, if I'm being honest, in the back of the head. Comes away completely unscathed. The jersey number six. And yeah, they're not happy. The Farnham coaching staff suggesting it was an elbow rather than a clash of heads. I think it's one of those where you just go, go up together. It's such a difficult one to referee. It's, it's, a, it's clearly a foul, but I'm not sure it's any more than that. Yeah, Coxley looks like he's going to be all right. I think he probably made the most of it. Your words, not mine. <laughs> 474 of you watching along. Thank you very much for joining us. Be it a Jersey Bulls fan, Farnham fan, or that just interested in Step 5 football. Thank you very much for watching along. Please do drop a subscribe if you aren't already doing so. Yeah, it's been a very engaging contest so far. It has been, it's been a really good game. It's been a really good game. Don't need a lot of goal mouth action to make it entertaining. This is just very interesting. Great header. Edwards. Was he brought down there? The free kick has been given. He did really well there, Shams. I, I have to say, sometimes he gets he gets a bit of stick for not competing in those areas. And he did everything right there and has and has drawn a foul in a very dangerous area. What I would say is, <laughs> it's one of those ones where he, it's probably a bit too close. 
especially for a right footer. But Harry Cooksley is more than capable of moments of magic. The man who scored the winner against Collier's Wood when it looked like the winning run was going to come to an end. It is, it is you know, it's difficult to say out there on the, on the camera, but you, it is raining quite heavily. It's like heavy light rain is how I'd describe it. Yeah. And it wasn't scheduled. Cooksley standing over it. And they're claiming handball down below us. Cooksley just looking to bend it around the wall. But it did its job. That's a dangerous pass, though. Farnham can come again here. Here's Owen Dean. Looking to drive into the box. Liddle picks it up. And it's into the area. Out as far as Cooksley, who sweeps with the cross to Jackson. The rain continues to fall. Yeah, that sandy area in the... That will be getting wet. Oh, dear. And they have numbers here with Trotter leading the charge. Comes back in to challenge, and Cooksley wonder if he might just bring him down here. Perhaps he should have done. Bickley. Boyle. Just got that pass all wrong. And they want... <laughs> The Jersey coaching staff wanted to pull back for the foul, but obviously the ref wanted to <laughs> play the it advantage. Such, it was such a good chance. They did. It's one of those ones where if he gives the foul, he gives a yellow. But if he doesn't, it's like, oh, he did have a decent amount of advantage. Difficult one for that. And uh, to be fair, uh, I think the referee refed it quite well. Yeah, it went on a bit too long for you to pull that back, in truth, as Dean Rule gathers that well. Canane looking good effort, good for area. Jackson. Joe Jackson keeps it in. Dean Rule now. Good voice from the... Oh, it's a poor, poor, poor pass. Jersey leaving players forward. Boyle looking over the top for Bickley. Meaton does very well again. And uh, Dean was fouled there by Barlow, who just gave Dean a little shove in the face there as he was getting up. Yeah, bit of gamesmanship. Um, I'm surprised the referee hasn't had a conversation with him about that, to be honest. But uh, yeah, no, it's one of those things, isn't it? You you want to see your team do it? <laughs> Can't have a go at him too much. No, nope, it's all part of the fun. Here's Dean, nicely weighted header for Owen Dean. Does well to and keep him. Kept it alive. And they'll have a throw, Farnham. Taken quickly. Here's Adam Little and Cooksley. Jack Dean. Cooksley. Always looking for Kenane. Harry Cooksley. They certainly trust each other, those two, two senior players. Well, what I would say is because Bickley has spent so much time focused on Max Meaton as his, as his opposition, Kenane is always the outball in attack. Yeah, Owen Dean loses out and he's. Arguing there with Cooksley. Emotions running high. But Owen Dean chases it down Done again. Done really well. And gets into the penalty area, Owen Dean. And his cross was just cut out there by LaRouge Tell, just in the nick of time for Jersey. Owen Dean responding well to a mistake by almost creating a chance. Been an excellent half of football if you're, if you've been watching along from the start. 490 of you joining us now. Dean gets up. Great header, but it's straight to a Jersey player. And he'll let fly. And Pat Nash had to scramble across. It's wow well there now. It will skip. It's a good save. He was never going to try and hold it. It was a really good strike. Excellently hit by Johnny LeCain. The number 10 for Jersey. A bit like Dean Rule, he'll be looking to get a bit more involved as the main attacking threat. A few big players, though, Jersey, for... This set piece, they are dangerous from set pieces. Cavallio standing over it. Just doesn't get hold of it. Trying to beat the first man. JJ Lloyd fouled there by Liddle, so they'll have another chance to send the cross into the box before a much deeper area. Playground chance there from the clock end. <laughs> another uh, another chance for 
for Jersey to get this into the box. Last one was poor. Um, you'd, you'd have to think that they're not going to waste too many opportunities like that. But what, final would dominate the possession. Neither team have really created that many chances. It's towards the back post. Dean gets up. That's just Cavallio. Into the penalty area. Canane away as far as McCain. Gets away from Rule. And the left footed shot. He cut across it too much there, Fraser Barlow. Another decent opportunity, a half chance for the visitors. Ten minutes before half time, growing into the game. Growing into the game, um, I think, I think, like I said, I've said a few times already, I think both teams have been really good. They're both well up for it tonight. Final probably created the fewer chances despite more dominance. Um, but it's been very even so far. Second ball picked up by Jersey. Boyle. Cavallio. Shrugged off by Dean. And over good the area. goes another one for Edwards to chase down. And again he gets there. And his touch is pretty good. Here's Adam Liddell. Good turn from him. Karoma. There's nobody bombing forward. At right back, Jack Dean was just sort of slowly making his way forward. Here's Owen Dean. And now Dean does make the overlap. And that's what Karoma was going for there. Yeah, just a bit of frustration growing in the Farnham ranks. Not really making anything stick up there with, you know, continued pressure. It's in little fits and starts, Farnham. Getting into really good areas with that ball over the top to Shamal Edwards. I think that's where the danger, the danger is going to come from for Jersey. And they've caused they've caused issues. Just not the perfect pass hasn't been played yet. Aaron Dean gets up. Almost took me out. Almost took us out and the the back windscreen of the car behind us. Boyle goes long. Bickley. Canane away. And Meaton likewise. Edwards has another one to chase. And just his presence. Again, Sham's done really well, just competing for everything up there, which is causing problems. Neaton. It's thankfully stopped raining. But there will be more of a zip to the playing surface out there than there was 20 minutes ago. Huxley. Ryan Kinnane. And uh, here's Jackson. Just looking at his options, assessing what's ahead of him. Pass. It's another poor pass from Omar Karoma. It's when he tries it first time, it doesn't seem to be coming off for him. No need to really do that on this surface. No need to force the issue. Plenty of time for Farnham, as they showed in their last league outing. Much better. Edwards. Let's drive at him. Done well. Shamal Edwards into the penalty area. And he tried to find Owen Dean. Here's Lamarca Roma. He shoots, and it's high, wide, and not very handsome. But you wondered if Edwards yeah, I don't should know have taken a shot. There's a, there's a striker who hasn't scored for a month there, Shamal Edwards. An inform Edwards cuts inside, does so well, just smacks it towards the bottom, bottom right corner. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't take the shot. Forward it goes from Roche. Bickley got up, as did Karoma. That's good. a cute little touch there from Liddell. Again, Edwards chases, but Roche got out well. Right, right idea from Owen Dean. Again, Farnham looking for that ball over the top. Make the most of what has looked like a you know, less than mobile jersey back line. They've been very good going forward and moving through the midfield, but at the back they've left a lot wanting. Little brings it down on his chest. Oh, just outnumbered. Go. 
Jimmy Hibbert calling for more from his side. Just more pressing, I think, to force a mistake at the back. We've seen a few from the Jersey defence, none of which have been punished. Five minutes to go until half time. And which manager do you think will be happier at the break if it stays as it is? I don't think either manager will be too unhappy. Um, obviously, Farnham will want to win the game. Uh, I'm probably expecting to more, more than Jersey will. But I think I think Jersey manager will be very happy with, with how his side's played. You know, it's a different kind of Jersey performance than what you're probably used to watching if you watch their highlights or have been to games before. Um, they they normally dominate possession and they normally um, you know have have ample chances. Probably more akin to Farnham. Little good first touch from Little, and he was just holding it for a moment before releasing Owen Dean, who looks to take on his man and. Again, maybe just a decision making in the final third. Let's find him down. It's been very poor decision making. It really has. Bickley holds it up brilliantly and releases Cavallio. But as is so often the case, Kane is coming across and that works now out got very run. nicely. Cooksley over the top and it's good weighted ball pretty nicely. Edwards gets a foot on and it. And well, Shamal Edwards again. Yeah, inch perfect from Cooksley. Tough one over the shoulder though for, for Shams to control perfectly. But I thought he did really well. Little. Space opened up for him and he tried to guide it into that far corner. Very difficult to hit the target with that sort of effort from there. Maybe putting his foot for it might have been the better choice. It was actually quite a good chance. He had so much time, Adam Little, to, to kind of pick his corner. It sat up beautifully for him. But again, Farnham finding joy with that ball over the top into Edwards. He's running them ragged. I think that is probably why Jono won't be too disappointed with this first half shown that Jersey have worked really hard I know I know it looks like they've they've been they've been really good and, and they for clarity they have I think they've been really good and they've got a chance here right at the death Max yeah, Meaton has done and timed that very really, well really good but but f let's not make any bones about it um, Jersey have had to work hard to keep this um, to keep this nil nil Meaton Challenging Done for really it. well there, Max Meaton. Here's Little. And they didn't like that one, Farnham. Getting a bit frustrated with these niggly little fouls. Yeah. Kind of call the captain over. He's had a few, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, Probably part of the game plan, in truth. And oh, definitely. Very well. Definitely. I think that was his final warning. From memory, our sponsor, Pitchside, and one of the co-hosts is Tom Garrett, played in America, played in a college team with Lorne Bickley. Right. As a piece of uh, useless information for you. Cooksley. Can he weave his way out of that situation? Yes, he can. Maiton, Jack Dean calling for it. Meaton has said looks for Owen Dean, off. and with the pace that was on that ball, it was always going to be difficult for Edwards to reach the flick on. Tempo's definitely dropped in the last five minutes. Um, feels like both teams are going to be happy for it to be half-time. Bit of a breather. Farnham haven't played a huge amount of football in the last week or so. Whereas Jersey have played loads of football. Clipped over the top. I just Bickley's just drifted out of the game a little bit since the opening exchanges. I, I think, to be fair to him, Max Meaton has, you know, after probably, I wouldn't say a rocky first 10 minutes, but a 10 minutes where Bickley had a really good shot on him. Max has done really well to, to negate that threat. Yeah, no easy task, but he's been up to it. As we tick into the last 30 seconds or so of normal time. Oh, chance here for bit chance here yeah, for turnover and Dean Rule tugged in back there. 
do well to escape a card. It's a poor touch. Farnham caught a couple of times in that area. That was probably the one where they've let it go the most. But is he booking him? Yeah. He had no choice. No. He's going to book his mate as well. Just talking to Fuller Kane, I would imagine. No, yellow card. Yellow card for Le Kane as well. Paul to be fair, <laughs> good referee. Paul Johnson just played in with the linesman that it was Dean Rules first for how much I'm not sure how much that matters when it's uh, <laughs> up in a counter attack like that. As cynical as that one was. Chance for Jersey at the death of the half. Good one. And uh, it was one in the air there by Barlow. Just didn't get enough on it. Just glanced it wide. Good chance. Good chance. What I would say about this, these two attacking midfielders in, in Owen Dean and Dean Rawls, they both love sticking wider than, than our sort of average formation we would see. Um, especially with, with Daryl Sanders, who's more likely to play in a classic 10. And I wonder if there will be time for this throw. Looks like there will be. I need to deliver it quickly if there's going to be another chance for them. Farnham, it's going to in fact, the referee calls to an end the first half, which hasn't seen a great deal of chances from either side in truth. There's Lewis Flatman, <laughs> Kings one straight at the referee. Um, but it's been of, of decent enough quality. I think the fans that have come out tonight and the fans that are watching online will have enjoyed what was a very competitive half and you don't you know you don't see that every week here no you don't um it had the feeling of a almost like an fa vars game earlier in the season against teams like snodland teams like bridgewater obviously came here and got a result you know good step five teams and you know farnham i think have been good i think jersey have been good um and it's been a game of very few good chances but a lot of quality defensive work. Um, I think Farnham's most disappointing factor will be the fact that they haven't carved out a better opportunity and made the goalkeeper work. What do you put that down to? Because it is very rare that you see no clear chances. We've seen Lidl's effort from the edge of the box. We've seen one or two go, go not even particularly close, just has sort of pop shots from distance. Why have they been so many struggles to create good chances? Well, look, let's not, put, let's not get away from it. The, the, the area of issue in uh, the pitch is right in the area that Farnham want to play in. Um, now, they don't have that problem in this second half, um, so I'm not going to be able to use that excuse <laughs> in 45 minutes' time. But what I would say is that that pocket of space is normally where you'll see Harry Cooksey pull out into um, and, and some of the attacking midfielders. I, I would also say you know, what I just mentioned, which is these, these two boys in the tens, the Dean Rule and Owen Dean, have been very very wide um, and that's that's been something that you don't normally see in this Farnham formation and we've been caught a few times when we've lost the ball in the middle that it's felt like Jersey have had so many men and bodies to come forward out of that middle area um, which has exposed Cooksey and, and Karoma in there probably a bit too much uh, where you don't normally see that normally you've had the, the sort of a, a higher press in that central area from, from our attack intent now whether or not that's um, the intention from, from the manager or, or not, I, I, I don't know, but um, it's, it's unusual to see our, our tens play on what has nearly been uh, each each touchline. So it's almost been a 4-4-2 to, um, this, this evening. I, I also think we haven't got uh, Adam Little into the game that much. I think the, I think the game plan has been very focused around that ball over the top to, to Shams, and, and rightly so, by the way. I, I think that that's been a real indicator of success for us so far um, there, there's been one or two times where either him or Owen Dean have been the man that's gone gone in behind got into the box I think it's again that that final third just tiny bit of composure just to either take a shot get it on target or or find a, a more compelling successful pass in that area um, in order to, to forge out a better chance but I we, we talked I, I talked to Frank as well on, on the way here and you know, we said that this game is, is 
if you were to draw up a game in this league that has the highest chance of finals having nil-nil, this would be it. Because I think, as we, we discussed right at the start, these are two teams that play a very, very similar style of football. And, you know, will that negate each other? Will it, will it create an amazing game? I think it's going to create an amazing game. I think the next 45 minutes are going to be really entertaining. But it's one of those games, very similar to the Nap Hill jersey game I watched two weeks ago, which almost needs a goal for either team to just change the dynamic a bit. Because at the moment, it's just so ping-pong in, in this area, very few chances, fewer people are trying to take a risk. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's been really entertaining. You've, you've teed me up perfectly there to mention uh, the substitute tonight, Waters, who's joined from Kingstonian. As you said, very different player to Lamarca Roma. Maybe he is that... He's got that bit of quality in him to unlock a defence like Jersey, which is very resolute. Yeah, look, I, I've, I've not watched him other than the 90 minutes he, he, he played uh, here at the Memorial Ground three and a half weeks ago. So couldn't tell you a huge amount of his, of his ability going forward. All I do know from a tweet that came in when we signed him is he scored 45 goals uh, in step six uh, from centre midfield. So he's a goal scorer. Yeah. Um, and come on, come, come in here. Oh yeah, come in here. I'm joined by Curly. How, How are, are you? you? I'm Very good. Well. I'm good. How did you find that? Oh, uh, it was a uh, it was a tough game, wasn't it, for both teams? Did like the weather change halfway through? But um, struggling to uh, find a back of the net. A few of the shots are back on the uh, both gap. teams. Both teams have been poor in front of goal on the whole. Yeah, it's been a tricky one. It's a tough game. But do you know what though? I uh, I was watching your goalie Nashi warm up. Oh my word. That lad goalkeeper has got some serious technique on him. His sidewinders are incredible. Did he come from Everton? I heard he was at Everton, then he's come down here and he's been doing a few trials, but what a keeper. Yeah, proper goalkeeper, one of those ones at 19 years of age where you just got you got to enjoy him whilst he's here because uh, he's, he's far too good for the level. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he made a good save. Mm. Um, down low to his right hand side, one that you'd expect him to make, but yeah. you know, one that you know you, you need to make in these conditions. I think it was raining at that time. Um, but how, how was the how was the ground in comparison to when you were last here about a year ago? I mean, we spoke to you for our channel Location Football earlier, and unbelievable what, what everyone here has done. It's incredible. We, we have already had the chili con carne, and not just saying this because we spoke about it earlier, but that food was literally exquisite. Like, you know, and like if you have a burger at a football. And you eat it, you're like, oh my god, I am like feel, stuffed. Oh, I feel like I've just eaten four of them. But we had, we had a portion of the chili con carne, enough to make you feel like I've eaten. But we're contemplating going. Oh, I, can't, oh, I could probably squeeze another one in. Like, Br brownie, br brownie as well. You've got the ten pound uh, theory of, of me and Lavin. We've both done a tenner at the uh, at the mystery kitchen, which is absolutely phenomenal. The food, mate, is is, is, is brilliant. And like you said, it's, it changes every week. We've already uploaded a photo, taking it footy scran. Hopefully we can get um, get that going as well. But um, what have you guys made of the first half? What's it been like up here? Because we were down here pitch level. A, a lot of quality, and it, it's nice to come here and see two teams that are somewhat evenly matched compared with what we normally see. Um, and stylistically, it's so interesting because both teams like to keep the ball. Both teams are very solid defensively. But I think second half, I think once we sort of get to where both managers will be thinking about changes, I think it's going to become really interesting what Farnham go to because Shamal Edwards. Uh, the striker up front has been having to work very hard, dragging defenders both sides, you know, trying to win all the flick-ons. Um, he's going to tire at some point. How does the game change then? We'll see, but tactically it's very fascinating for this level. How annoyed would you be if it didn't get to 24 games? Like, Does that play on the play? Because obviously that record is unbelievable. And it's like it's a bit like what Maidstone did in the FA Cup. They've already broke the record. They went last. They went out last night, had their day out at Coventry, and they got battered 5-0. But th how much... As you, as the director, does that feel that you want to keep that going as much as you can? But no, or is it just, look, we get, we're going to go for the title anyway. You know, there's no easy game. It's not done yet. But how much does it affect you? I think I think it affected me far more a week and a half ago when it when it was so close to the the record. Yeah. I think that those things weigh very heavy on your mind. <laughs> uh, when you've come so far, you just want to get it over the line and get it done. Yeah, but for, for me, you know, this Jersey Bulls team is tough. Yeah. Right? Last, last last season, we got a draw here, 1-1, um, and then we went to theirs, and it was 1-1 until the 97th minute, and Sham scored uh, to, to make it 2-1, and, and it was an amazing weekend out in, out in Jersey. So, 
it's always a tight game. I, I was just discussing before you climbed up the ladder uh, <laughs> that it's probably the only game in the in the season um, that you'd have you'd have said or oh, Farnham could draw this nil nil, right? right. Be because they're both two good defensive sides. Um, but saying that, you've got a lot of attacking quality on the pitch, both in Jersey and um, in Farnham's ranks. Who, if they are given a chance, we could we could see a, we could see a goal out of nothing. So it's exciting. It's set up well. There's over 380 people here in the ground. Brilliant. There's another 500 watching online on YouTube, oh, which is awesome. So yeah, so these these things are moving non-league forward. What do you think the gaffer said to the boys at half time? Because there's a few. Uh, the centre half looked a bit frustrated. There was a oh, that's just him. Oh, that that's just him. No, no, no. no. We, we, I think we won eight nil when he was still doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. But he looked a bit frustrated. I think was it overplaying the ball a little bit? I think the centre mid it a few out of touch, but. Is this a uh, is it not a typical performance tonight? Is there a lot to take on board in terms of conditions? Obviously the big the, the sand pit that we spoke about earlier, which can't be helped. But what do you reckon the gaffer sort of said to him at half time? Um, honestly, I think I think he'll be relatively relaxed. I think we there's Jersey really struggling t on on the turn uh, with us putting that ball in behind to yeah. Shams and to, to Owen Dean. So I think that from that perspective, he'll be pretty happy with that game plan. Um, it's just about forging out a couple of good chances and then he's got to trust his men to put it in the back of the net. I think we defended pretty well. Yeah. I think you're right. In midfield, we've we've looked shaky. We were saying before you, you came up that there's there's been a gap in the middle a bit bit too much. And actually, in um, ironically, completely different to what I told you at the start of the game, our, our two tens have been so wide. Now, whether or not that, whether or not that is pitch induced yeah. um, and therefore we'll see them much tighter together in the second half I don't know don't know if it was a game plan or if it was them going out on a whim but yeah, from a performance point of view Farnham have been dominant on the ball I think you know if you watch Jersey every week you'll be shocked to see how little possession Jersey have got in this game um, but do you do a lot of that do you, look, do you watch a lot of the other teams yeah you watch I mean to be fair to Jersey um, and if the, the media team back in Jersey are watching, they do an incredible job yeah. and um, they get all their highlights up within 24 hours. Amazing. And, you know, they, they live stream games. Um, if, they're, if they're playing on the mainland, then they live stream back to, back to Jersey. So you get to watch quite a lot of them, probably more than most other teams. And, um, and, they're, and they're also a joy to watch, right? Yeah. They play good football. So uh, it's not just like watching any old non-league side. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I think it'll be a really good next 45 minutes and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. I will. Where are you standing? Where are you are, so we were standing literally by the, the mystery kitchen because we literally just did it and then we were enjoying it from there. The fans are having a good time as well. One thing I would say before we go down uh, downstairs, which player should we look out for when watching this second half of Farnham? Who's going to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and, and, and get the three points? Well, the player who did it uh, 10 days ago was Harry Cooksey, number eight. Okay. Um, we were nil-nil for 85 minutes against bottom of the league in a pitch that was 10 times worse than this uh, uh, away and beautiful move just minutes after the substitutions and involved both substitutes two one twos and drilled it into the bottom corner so if there's a man who's going to pick it up by the scruff of the neck it'll be number five the captain who's Moni uh, <laughs> number eight who will uh, who'll make something happen or um, number 46 up front uh, but okay. I think Jersey have done a really good job locking but there's quality down. on the bench as well I mean I think Lewis Flatman's another one that can come on and make Absolutely. a big impact from the bench and I'm sure Kai Tanner will do the same so I'm, I'm just looking forward to what those changes are and how the game plans Charlie Poston in our number 9 um, he scored 35 goals last season in this wow. league uh, Flatty scored 30 in this league last season he's on the bench Kai you know, we got him out of Sutton's academy uh, we've got Mark Waters number 4 um, we signed him last week from two levels above uh, from Kingstonian and who else is on the bench? Tom Smith uh, from a left-footed uh, delivery point of view left back. So we've got a lot of good options. He's been here nine years. His, yeah. Him Very and cool. Max Meaton, number 26 centre back. I've uh, been here for a long time. Love it. Well, I'll leave you to it, cool. guys. Thanks thank you so very much. much. Thanks for popping up. No, thank you. What a you, by the way. <laughs> Did decent there. Good, mate. Decent <laughs> for this level. See you later. See ya. Um, yeah, I think I think. It's going to be a really, really interesting next 45 minutes. Um, and I think you're absolutely, you've absolutely you just hit the nail on the head there while speaking to, to Scott and Curly. Um, the, the subs are going to play a massive role here. And I think that's probably the only thing that will be keeping Jono really excited about this game because he knows that in the last 10 minutes, he's going to have the upper hand when it comes to quality off the bench. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We see... Waters warming up below us. Tom Smith, as you mentioned. Lewis Flatman, I just think about that hat trick he scored a few weeks ago. Yeah, off the bench, yeah. So, Kaitana scored a few 
important goals Titana off the bench. Assists against Collier's Wood. Yeah. So they'll be very keen. And Charlie Possum still, as, as we kind of make fun of him for, kind of looking forward to that big goal, that big winning goal. It, it will happen. It will happen this season. Um, and to be fair, this this game, you know, it's been physical. You know, that's the sort of sort of team that that Charlie will will uh, revel in. So. You know, he was obviously involved in that Collier's Wood goal as well. I know we've gone on about it a bit. You know, it feels weird we to go on. We don't have any football in, no, in between to true. talk about. So. I know it feels weird to go on about a goal <laughs> against bottom of the league, but it was an important goal. It felt big in the moment, and it involved a lot of good football in the build-up. So, yeah, very, um, very excited for this second half. Uh, the nerves are kind of gone for me. I think the, the better team is going to win this game. Um, it's not one where I've watched it and gone, oh, Farnham need to take their chances and, and I feel like Jersey are going to get a winner out of nowhere. You know, both teams have been very good. It's been a great advert for, for the level of football. I'm delighted that we're, we've got over 500 people watching along and, and hopefully Farnham can, shooting towards the clock end, finish this game off. Owen Dean looked a bit frustrated at times with himself, I would say, in the first half, maybe one or two loose touches or misplaced passes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love her. I love her, and I think he's so tenacious with, with how he uses the ball and drives at players and jumps into them uh, in the air. I think, you know, if I think about Owen from 18 months ago when I first met him to, to now, you know, he's grown as a, as a man and he's filled out and he's become far more athletic. Um, and, you know, when you pair that with his, with his footballing ability and his footballing brain, I think he's a very, very dangerous player. And if we can get him into a bit of space, you know, he's been, he's been off the boil when it comes to being in front of goal, but he's, he's been very good in and around it. And he was, he was actually the one that was hooked at Collier's Wood, and we were surprised at that moment. Yeah. And obviously it, it ended up being the right decision yeah. for the goal, but he was very, very dangerous in that game too. I mean, you could say if both him and Shamal Edwards, both those guys need a goal. And when you've Absolutely. got two of those players on the pitch at the same time, they're playing perfectly well for the most part, but need a goal. Maybe see more of these stalemates in the first half, and obviously went a lot longer than that against Collier's Wood as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a few. It's so weird. Like I, we've I mean, scored 120 goals this season. I feel like we've got four or five players yeah. that need a goal. It's yeah. so weird. Um, I mean, you've got to moan about something. Like I know. You're, I you're know. trying to find things. But you're to, right. To you're right. I do feel like. Our front four out there all need a goal. And it was Flatman a few weeks ago until he yeah, came he... back with that hat trick. So, you know. But the exciting thing about all of them is if they get one, you, can, you think they can score five. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a brilliant half. Farnham kicking towards their preferred clock end. They are going to get stuck in that, that sandy patch in midfield, so it's going to be important for them to control the ball and play in the nicer half of the pitch. And no silly passes around the back, no, no. putting each other under pressure, I guess, will be the aim of the game as well. Critical. Farnham chasing 24 wins in a row. Is that a, a milestone of any kind? Absolutely not, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice to do it, though. <laughs> yeah, the crowd certainly want to see that. They don't want to go home having witnessed a 0 nil, nil as good as it has been. And uh, great, not that. Yeah, Farnham starting as they finish the first half, really looking over the top for the wide men, or well, the number 10s that have become wide men. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to see if they stick to that game plan or if we see them a bit closer together um, in the middle of the pitch. Good to hear that the um, uh, food went down well, the chili con carne. Yeah, always nice to hear positive reviews. Um, if you don't know, Curly and Scott, both from Soccer AM, now run their own football, non league football channel. Called Location Football. Yeah, Come down a year ago. And back tonight. Brian Killane talking everybody through the game as he so often does. Karoma wins the header. Edwards. Good touch. Around the corner for Little, who has space to run into. He also has Owen Dean for support. Owen Dean. Where's he off to? He's waiting for some support. He turns into the box. Here's Cooksley. Adam Little, not his best touch. Is a, it was a heavy pass from Cooksley, who 
is nudged over there by Lloyd. Jackson faints and finds Meaton in plenty of space. He's looking over the top for Dean. Look quickly. That was the instruction at the end of the... Yeah, and Dean went in pretty late, I guess. I think we're going to see a feisty second half based on the opening two minutes of this second 45. Did you say there's needle between the two sides at all? No, nah, not really. Yeah. I think, that, to be fair, I think they're probably the two teams that respect each other the most in the league. Um, I think we had such a good time when we went out to Jersey last season. Obviously, the, the result was, was amazing and how we did it was amazing. But the, the fans and the committee and everybody associated to Jersey are always great. And, and we both have a huge amount of respect for, for each other. Obviously, we have some banner on Twitter with some of the fans. but um, Not naming names. <laughs> not naming names. Karoma looking for Edwards, who has pace. Just not enough there to beat Lloyd to it. Did really well. The Jersey right back. Here's Jackson, has to get his feet sorted out, and does really well. Karoma using his body to win the free kick. Jo Joe Jackson did brilliantly there, by the way. And he's bombing beyond Dean Rule here. Can he pick out a man in claret and blue, Joe Jackson? He goes for goal! Oh, Dean Rule there! Claims of handball, actually. It did hit his arm, but it was so innocuous. Really opened up for Joe Jackson there. And now Kinane comes across. Time, time, time. Great I, I, was, I was discussing with Kai Tanner. I thought second half, Joe, Joe Jackson would have a bit more space. You forget about him, and he's dangerous. Cutting inside. Didn't quite get the um, like the purchase on his on his cross or his or a shot there, but he's so dangerous in that second half because his en engine is brilliant. Yeah, five goals and seven assists for Jackson this season, and obviously he's been a midfielder for a lot of his career, so hardly surprising that he's chipped in, but he hasn't played that much midfield this season, so it's impressive figures. It's good. Dean, still going. It comes across to face a goal. Maybe just need a bit more composure. Same could be said for Jersey. Trying to clear their lines, though. Here's Cooksley. Needs to pass. And now Jack Dean. Just couldn't quite keep it in. It was a clever effort, really, from Cooksley, but a tall order to find Jack Dean. Farnham started brightly, though. They've started brightly. Yeah, there's a lot of purpose in Joe Jackson and Owen Dean and Harry Cooksley. I think it's also due to the pressure of the bench. The bench comes with so much quality. You know they're going to make subs. They're not afraid to because the quality is, is of such high standard that these players can just leave it all out there for 60 minutes if they need to. Pumped up towards Edwards again. This time he can't bring it down. Kinane and uh, Little brings it down and again just rushed his Rush. pass. Karoma steps in. He got whacked there. The referee waves play on. Here's Edwards. Bit scrappy there in the middle. Yeah, it was poor. It was poor. It was another great chance for Farnham just to get the ball down. Jackson. Jackson hey, meets him. Again, wastes no time in looking ahead to Owen Dean. And it's a throw in. Yeah, they, they've identified that, haven't they? It's clear. Like Max's instruction is get it wide quicker. Don't take a touch, don't move it. Kane. Great touch. Looking for Jackson, who it's might get to this one. Hard to read how the turf's going to react to that sort of bounce. Karoma. Nice. Harry Cooksley. Farnham has started really brightly here. And as I say that, yeah. But they're playing with much more purpose. Back up to 500 of you watching along. Thank you very much. Decent crowd in here as well. All eating chili con carne. First time we've seen Lorne Bickley in the second half. Farnham harrying from the front. 
much to Paul Johnson's delight. And a lovely controlled pass from Kalein to Dean Rule, who's looking to take on Lloyd. Gets around him. And uh, free kicks gone against Jersey for the tackle by Sutcliffe, the substitute. Maybe element of a stamp there on Dean Rule, who stayed down. Felt, I mean, it just feels like a foul. I'm surprised he's booking him unless it's. Yeah, both went in pretty hard. Rule is getting offended. back to his feet. He bought himself some time here, the ref. Yeah, he, he went in with a lot of force, I would say that. Just looking at the replay. Is he going to book him? It is a yellow. and it's Went to his back pocket. That's rare. That is rare. I think it's because he actually got it out of his top pocket and put it back in. Could buy himself some time. Yeah, it was a forceful tackle. Just relieved to see Dean Rule back to his feet. Farnham committed basically everyone forward and Jersey have reciprocated by putting everyone back. Yeah, statement of intent from the hosts. In by Cooksley. Kinane at the back post hooks it back in. And it was a real opportunity, really. What a chance, Jack Dean. Ugh. Jack Dean would have paid for that opportunity at the start of the start of the game. Hung up for him brilliantly by Harry Cooksey. And it was really. It was actually Owen Dean. Yeah, Owen Dean. Hold on. And when we didn't have to wait long to see the first change, and it is going to be a debut for Mark Waters. And he will replace Lamar Caroma, who's understandably disappointed. You don't want to be brought off in the first 10 minutes of the second half, but as we discussed at halftime, just maybe something different needed in the midfield. See what this man's all about. Mark Waters, Farnham Town's no new number four. And he's got plenty of time to put his stamp on the game. We're about to find out what kind of player he is. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, I, I was very impressed with him, and I, and I think I made that quite clear. I think I wouldn't shut up about him, to be honest, when we played Kingstonian. And, uh, yeah, lo and behold, he's a, he's a Farnham player within a couple of weeks. So very interested to see how he settles into this team. Alongside... Ooh, chance. Cooksley, but... Some defending to do first. Little. And uh, looking for Dean Rule. And he's looking for Shamal Edwards, who's got the pace. Has he got the end product here? Shamal Edwards went for goal and was crowded out in the end, and the chance goes begging. It was a really nice move from Farnham. Adam Little moved it nice and quickly out wide, and then Dean Rule found a perfect pass, and we really saw the pace of Shamal Edwards there as he beat his man. That is still the MO from Farnham Town's bench. Get that ball in behind to Shamal Edwards. He's beating them for pace every single time. Max Meaton back to Panash, who takes a touch. What a lot to see. Cooksley. Looking for Edwards. Cannot keep that one in. Um, what, what I was about to say about Waters and, and signing players at this stage of the season. Um, you know, we, we brought in in two players before Waters in Brandon Kalu and Josh Leyland, who hadn't played a lot of football before they, they played for Farnham. Brandon came um, having actually you know, not, not signed for a club at the start of the season after a really good season at Northwood and, and Leyland had come off an injury um, and hadn't really featured for Hayes and Yedding. Um, Waters is the opposite, played every game, nearly every minute as captain for Kingstonian. So you're getting a match fit player, which is a completely different situation than, than the last two signings that we've seen come into to Farnham Town. Ready to go from the off. Plenty of time, as you said, for Waters and perhaps more subs to change this game for the better for Farnham. Looking to make it 24 from 24. Kai Tanner is the one on his own warming up on the far side, down, down the touchline. Yeah, Wouldn't they. be surprised to see him. Me, 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 me. 
Interesting that the Jersey coaching staff instructed the team to take their time with the throw rather than getting on with it quickly. Probably tells you that the point would do them just fine. And Rule went in, and it's going to come for Jackson here. Comes back. On that point, around it, a point being enough for, for Jersey, I mean, obviously, look, if you're the first team to take points off Farnham, you'll be happy, but at the same time, like I said, right at the start of the game, it's like, that playoff mix is, is far from secure. You know, and, and Farn Farnham played Jersey twice. So, you know, it will be interesting to see what, and, and obviously it's score dependent, interesting to see what Jersey do in the last 10 minutes if it is still nil-nil. Are they committing them forward here? They are indeed. It's Sutcliffe. Chance looking for Cavalier. The flag Backstick. goes oh. up. Took his time to put the flag up. First time we've seen Cavalier get in behind. He's been he did quiet. so illegally. He's been quiet tonight, Cavalier. I think that's probably down to how good Jack Dean's been on that right hand side. Jackson again bombing on. Here's Rule. Oof. An awkward one for Meaton. It was. Just don't want to play football in that area. Cooksley. Over the top. And that one's not going to work out. Maybe Edwards' legs are beginning to catch up with him. I'm not sure what the change would be for, for Edwards. I could, I could even see it being Kai and moving Dino up front. Get some extra legs in that mid, in that midfield sort of area. Rather than, uh, than changing things too much, keep, keep Dino on the pitch and just push him higher, more central. Nearly 600 people watching on now. That's Farnham. Nil, Jersey nil is the game in front of us. It's been an excellent game. A really, really hard for excellent football match. Wonder how many of those people are thinking this might be the night that Farnham drop points. And if it is, so be it. But Farnham will want to go down fighting if it is. Charles so Edwards chasing. Again, that one just skips out. You wonder if they might change the plan at some point. They won't panic. We did see at Collier's Wood, not to go on about it again, but we did see a patient approach. It is going to be Kai Tanner, the next up. Currently again, is in, getting his instructions from manager Paul Johnson. That's gone straight out. Yeah, Jersey have just lost a little bit of attacking impetus in this second half. Not been quite as positive. But that might change later on, like you say. Get to 70 minutes and then go for it. May well be the order of the day. First touch there for Waters. Yeah, he's waited a while for it. You can see he's a talk up. Yep. Bring another captain into the into the team. So that's a decent knock there. Really good. Here's Liddle. He keeps it in, and it's a cross into a dangerous Ooh. area. Nobody arriving at the near post. Edwards doing his best to get there. Just gone a little bit flat the last few minutes. And yeah, both teams. It's it's rare that you see two changes in such quick succession so early on in the half from Farnham. But Paul Johnson's feeling that's necessary. Ooh. Waters and Cooksley. <laughs> I'm sure their communication will get better than that between one another as they get used to each other. Done well. Edwards looking to... Done well. Lloyd. Oh, I can't believe he's given that. That was total 50-50.
I'm going to be really interested to see who, who he changes this for. For me, it's 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 Shams. I think he's run incredibly hard. And I think he's almost forcing a certain style of play right now. Yep. And Kai, uh, Kai coming on and, and pushing Dino forward would be what I'd expect. Oh, indeed. When then it sails. Still going. And wins I'm the well. free kick. Take your time, Owen. Take it's, your time. Let's uh, load the box. It like is saying. interesting that Tanner is getting the nod. Well, Flatty has a slight calf issue. Now, I don't think that will stop him coming on if, if needs must, but it probably stops him being the next up. Tanner's no longer on the touchline from what I can see. He's just having a sit down waiting for this to blow over, I think. Cook sees delivery. Jackson on the end of the box. Cooksley again. This time the cross comes in left footed and Canane's the target. Might drop here for Jack Dean almost. He'll chase this one down. And that was precarious. But they get it away for now. Booted. Shams, Shams will chase that forward by Canane. And Edwards. Stops JJ Lloyd in his tracks. Kai Tanner's gone back into the dugout. Yes, this is a fascinating tactical affair. It really is. It Paul really Johnson is. probably doesn't quite know what to do. It's a very unusual game script. Edwards still continues to chase. Yeah, I like that from Edwards. That's going all the way through. To be fair, Farnham have completely nullified the threat of Jersey in the second half. They've done really, really well. Picked up here by Cavallio, but he's happy just to bang it down the line. He's a player who rarely does 90. Now we are going to see Kai Tanner. Yeah, it is, I think it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it, is what, way. it is what I thought. Yeah. Great effort tonight from Edwards. Was. Never really had, I mean, his best chance, he, he didn't decide to shoot. He, he was looking for Liddle in the first half. But his effort and his battle warrants applause. Yeah, I think, I think he's been really good tonight. I think, I think he's done all the things right that he normally gets a blame for not doing. And he's, he's battled hard in every 50-50. In every he's run the channels really well. Um, he's not had the joy that he, he'd have wanted, but he's he's been he's been really really good tonight, Shamal Edwards. And this is a chance for Kai Tanner, who's also got plenty of time to impose himself. Yeah, 25 minutes to go. Farnham nil, Jersey nil, an uncharacteristic swipe by Cooksley. And as much control as Farnham have got, one mistake, and they could unravel Ooh. as Waters turned. Almost into trouble. What a pass that is. Yeah, Jack Dean chasing after it. And he's brought down by Fergus Boyle. And that will be a yellow card. As clear as day. <laughs> it, it, was, it was the pass of the day from Max Meaton. It was an unbelievable pass. Like, I, I fear that he mishit it and he was going to send it into orbit. But instead, he's, he's played it perfectly into the feet of Jack Dean, who one touch has beaten his man, and because of it, it's going to make it difficult for that young man, that left back, to defend for the next 25 minutes. And the last man you want running that year is Owen Dean, with Jack Dean bombing on on the overlap in that situation. Again, zero players left upfield for Jersey Bulls. Very clear from them. Oh, and it, Jack Dean with a big chance, and it came to him again on his left foot. Heroic defending. Farnham are causing problems from set pieces. They really are. I think it was Waters who almost got ahead on that initially. Would have loved it. Would have loved it. <laughs> 600 of you watching along for the last 20 minutes of this tie. 
in by Cooksley. And again, it was Waters that went close. How has that not gone in? Out. How has that not gone in? Foul by Little. Well, Waters cannot believe. It's come off the in inside of the bar. It's bounced down and a second go at it. Waters cannot believe that he's not marked his debut. We're going to watch that one back. With a crucial goal. It was as close as Farnham have come. It just bounced down and up against the bar. Might have been a deflection or two, I'm not sure. But these set pieces may well be the route to victory. Who is it going to be? Parlo. Parlo? Kimamati coming on for Jersey to applause from the travelling support. That's the second change of theirs. 19. For Sutcliffe. I think. The number 19. I think that's. I think he's just changed shirt. I think that's uh, Fraser Barlow. Well, he's on a yellow card, whoever it was. Chance. And it just snatched at his effort there. Bickley. Yeah, I think that's Fraser Barlow has just come on. I think he might have changed, changed tops. Little now the man tasked with chasing down those long balls forward. Waters. Cooksley. He's, he's had two good chances from set pieces. What's the ball there? Here he is again. Don't lose it there. Tanner. Fizzed into him by Meaton. Waters sensibly goes back to Nash. Could kick that. And a Farnham throw. 21 minutes to find the winner. It's plenty of time. I wonder if Jersey will fancy that they might get another chance or two. We saw Bickley's effort a moment ago. That will remind Farnham that still plenty of quality in this Jersey side. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, never say die attitude this Jersey side. Score countless amount of goals in the last five minutes. I mean, probably more than I've... I've seen any other club in this league. It really is impressive. Their never say die attitude and their fitness, fitness levels. Um, but they haven't been in their second half at all. Farnham Town hit the crossbar in the last two or three minutes. Probably the best chance of the match so far. Jackson. Waters. And now Jackson. Looking up. Cross it goes to Meaton. Jack Dean. The neighbours will be happy as the drum and voices are in full song. I don't like that area. Kinane. High ball. Does well there. Lofted forward to Owen Dean who wins his header. Here's Kaitana. Sets it for Adam Little. Shot deflected and it's going to bobble into the grateful arms there of Pierce Roche. And uh, yeah, it's got a bit of cramp there, I think. Some words exchanged between the two benches. And they look in good spirits, Jersey. I mean, they'll, they'll be, like you said a minute ago, they'll be happy with, with a point, ultimately. Um, I think on this second half display, they'll be very happy with a point. But there has been a couple of stoppages, so 19 minutes is not all we're going to see, I'm sure. That was a nice move from Farnham Town, though. Set up Adam Little for a good strike. Um, first time Farnham have kind of found the ball towards the middle of the goal and a, and a shooting opportunity. Farnham 
let it run back to Nash. He's looking for Rule just over the top of him. Lekim Amati got two Farnham players to contend with. One of them was Dean Rule, who was looking to just thread it through the Ivan Needle there for Owen Dean. Cuxley shoved a little bit, but. No tried foul. the Hollywood pass there, I think they call that one. And they've kind of been limited to that, really. In the second half, as Kinane looks long again, and Owen Dean is a target this time. He wins his header. And it's dropped into an area where Farnham would have loved someone to be Great touch picking Max up Meehan. that second ball. It is all Farnham now. Kinane, he doesn't want to see that perfect record go. Cooksley clips it over the top for Rule, oh. and it just hit him on the back. You feel like it might just come off in a minute, though, for Farnham. They're turning the screw a little bit here. They're knocking on the door. Good win there by Jackson, but still some defending to do. Away by Meaton, but it's more up than out. Waters Good. wins his header. Little, you wondered if he had to come back from an offside position he was. there. I thought he was. Tanner. Waters, can he work it all the way across for Jackson? Waters. Waiting for easy, easy ball. an option to present itself. Farnham have had a lot of possession this last 10 minutes. Still yet to really test the goalkeeper all game. Cooksley. Very patient from Farnham. No reason not to be. Risky one from Meaton, but finds its target. Now it's Here's good. Dean Rule. Here's Jackson. Lovely ball into a dangerous area. They scramble it away. There's always a Jersey body there, isn't there? Chance here. Yeah, they've released McCain. And his ball, that sums up Jersey's second half. Summed it up, isn't it? Just no quality from them since the break. In an attacking sense. Little goes over. Meaton looks straight for Kaitana, who can drive forward now. Kaitana maybe should have released it. One, one touch too many. Clipped over the top. Meaton has really dealt with Bickley expertly tonight. And that was no exception. Here's Joe Jackson. And now Owen Dean. <sighs> yeah, strong from Owen Dean there to win the ball back after his mistake. Oh, poor decision making. That's going to stay in as well. Poor decision making, really. Farnham doing really well to forge little openings in pockets in those attacking areas, but then struggling to make the right decision at the right time. But you feel it's coming. Both Cooksley and Jackson are in. Contention to win this ball. Here's Cooksley. Wants a free kick, won't get it. Again, a lovely touch from Dean Rule, and he turns towards goal straight away. Surprised he didn't give a foul there, the referee. Dean. So Jack Dean. Just looking for Tanner, he's coming back to collect it. Good well tackle, read, man. though. Waters. Farnham Good from Mark Waters. Are absolutely all over Jersey here. 
in terms of possession, winning every battle it seems, but that resolute Jersey defence standing firm. Yeah, they've been good, Jersey. Can't take Dean. Tanner was making an interesting run. Dean comes back to Cooksley. 13 minutes for Farnham to unlock the door. Now in Dean just looking to take on his man. But again, it's only half clear. Yeah, far, Farnham just needs to be patient here. It feels like it's a matter of of when, not if, at this stage, but still yet to carve out a proper chance. Yeah, not from open play, at least. And Owen Dean offside. It's just not quite been his night in the final third. He's been as tenacious as ever. It's just not come off for him when he's needed that bit of quality. Well, it would feel like a smash and grab now for Jersey if they can get a win, a late goal, because they've been very poor in this second half and Farnham have been excellent, but they haven't been able to forge out a chance. Charlie Postance is getting stripped and ready. I think that'll be throwing Dean. Can Postance make himself a hero? If there was ever a chance, it's now. And to be fair, Farnham have looked dangerous from set pieces and we're only gonna compound that by bringing on the likes of Charlie Postance. Mark Waters have looked really good since he's come on, steady the ship in the midfield. And he's found Dean Brawl in some space. Adam Little, oh, his touch lets touch. him down, and he did foul Watson there, Adam Little. It's not quite been his night either. I think, I think it's been one of his worst performances in the Farnham show, that really. And I, I don't like to say that, but I think he's been poor. I think he's been poor. And he's been booked. Adam Little, persistent fouling. Dean, Dean Rule makes way. For Owen. Constance. Owen Dean back into the tent. Chance to make himself a final hero. It would put a smile on everybody's face. <laughs> it really would. Talk about more strikers that we think need a goal. <laughs> Everybody, everybody up front is needed a goal. He will get a chance. He always he will. He always does. Always seems to fall for him for something. Half chances. Such a flat kick. Yeah, aimless. But that isn't from Pat Nash. Looking to get Possums involved straight away. And he's released Kai Tanner if he can get there. Just oh. needs to not give a foul away, really. Oh, silly exactly what he's done. Clock ticks into the final 10 minutes of normal time. We're in, we're almost in Cooksley at Collier's Wood territory. Jack was, Dean got a bit of tightness, I think. Maybe a bit of cramp. It's a very heavy pitch for obvious reasons. That's not the best kick. And, it's a decent touch there from Dean. Charlie Possums is going to get his chance. Can he take it? He goes down in the area. But the referee's having none of it. He, he, he's having none of it as well. What a great chance that was. And uh, what's happened? Well, one of the Jersey players has gone into the hoardings there. I think it was Tanner that... Was it? I think it might have been a... Oh, no, it is Tanner, yeah. ...collided with him, and he's going to need attention. It was... I'm not sure whether there was any intent there or not. We're about to find out. This was such a poor, he just fell over Charlie Poston. It was a great chance to get a shot away. Yeah, I mean, it's a nothing, it's a nothing foul. But maybe something that's just gonna up the ante a little bit here. Farnham don't want this game to peter out. We are really going to see a sizable chunk of added time with all these injuries and talking twos. It's a red card. And what Farnham are in disbelief. I 
can't believe what I've just seen. It's a stunned silence here. Nobody in the ground can believe what they've seen. I cannot believe what I've just seen. And we credited the referee so much. Uh, he must be taking the advice of his linesman. It's the most innocuous situation. I cannot believe it. Yeah, there's, there's smiles below us. I think <laughs> they I can't think... believe it either. They can't believe it either. That is an absolute howler. I think the silence says it all. I can't believe he just given that. It's such a nothing situation. Yeah, Kaitana leaves the field of play and it's going to take something really special now. I just can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Yeah, real stun, an unbelievable moment. And a shame. Unless they've seen something that we haven't. And it's obviously on the other side of the pitch, and we, we have seen it on the on the replay. Unless there was something after that, or it's descent, or I, I don't know. But we'll find out after the game. Final have got work to do, though. We've seen them get back into games with 10 men before. But I'm stunned. I'm stunned. Game plan has to stay intact though and Waters is strong in the challenge there he's got Little to his left here's Adam Little looking for the back post Farnham need to shoot and those second balls are going to be difficult to win now with the man disadvantage for Farnham it will change the shape slightly but you know, I, I think it will be it will be interesting to see if Jersey change anything themselves. It's one of those luxury positions that we've lost. It's not it's not a requirement to completely change things. I think Waters has been really good since he came on, made himself an option. Owen Dean, easy ball, Owen, done well. Beats his man, Owen Dean. Can he grab the game by the scruff of the neck here, Owen Dean? He goes down the box, and the referee has pointed for a penalty! It's soft. Has he given it? What's he given? Maybe, a, maybe they're looking for a red? I believe so. The fans, likewise. Brilliant run by is Owen he, is Dean. He the, is he the player on a yellow? Fergus Boyle. It is, it's, it is a his innocence. He's gone. And the game has He's turned. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth has happened in the last two minutes? Fergus Boyle becomes the second man to be dismissed, and this game has just come alive. I don't know where to look, I don't know what to do. 750 people watching, Farnham Town penalty in front of the clock end. Oh, I hate these, I hate these, I really do. I hate them. Harry Cooksley was the man that found the breakthrough at Collier's Wood. He's so often the man from the spot. I hate them. And this might be just his biggest penalty yet. I hate them, Ben Smith. In a Farnham Town shirt. Harry Cooksley. No. Yes! It's that man again! And he's got another celebration for the occasion. Harry Cooksley. No sooner had Farnham gone down to 10 men than finding a winner through Harry Cooksley, but Owen Dean's run to win the penalty and to make it 10 against 10 came out of absolutely nothing. Wow, I don't know what to say. It, it felt like he missed hit it. But in fact, it was a brilliant penalty into the bottom corner. The goalkeeper guessed right. He puts it there every single time. When will someone learn? And those smiles below me. Those have smiles have been wiped off jersey faces. Wiped them off. Five to go, but we know they'll be out of time. Probably near a 10. Yeah, you get the sense the drama's not over yet. Jersey have to go for this now.
you just never know what's going to happen when you tune in to one of these streams. You see goals, you see red cards, you see penalties. It's been all action these last few minutes. It's going to be exciting. We promised you excitement. We're delivering it. 800 of you watching on. A roller coaster of emotions. For this, if Farnham can hold on, will be the sweetest victory of all, I think. It would be two one nils in a row. It will be two one nils in a row if it stays the same. Harry Tuxley, the man for the big occasion. But all the credit to Owen Dean, who will probably admit himself it's not been his best night, but that run, I mean, it was Wayne Rooney Euro 2004-esque. Yeah, he took it upon himself. Finally to work for every ball here. Austin's What's not renowned for his pace, so he might struggle to get there. But it's got to work hard though, challenge. Charlie. And they are again, gone. his mere presence forces the error and the clock end has <laughs> come alive. Oh! Barnum are just, you see Mark Waters there just calling for calm. Yeah, this is where leaders are absolutely critical. You've got three captains in Waters, Cooksley, Kenane. And yeah. it's about managing the game now. Chasing this one down. Where does he get all his energy from? That a little. Neaton. Does well. Probably staking a claim for man of the match, Max Meaton. But we don't want to speak too soon, of course. Jackson he himself has been excellent this second half and he's released Postance. You wonder if the flag does indeed go up. Yeah, it looked offside. It looked offside. Charlie needs to do better work out there. He needs, to, he needs to make the ball stick for a few minutes. But let's not forget, Farnham were down to 10 men. And that was quickly equaled out with Jersey doing exactly the same and finding a red card in the face of one of their players. It's 10 v 10 out there. Can and it's going to be absolutely fascinating next five to six minutes. Farnham will hope it's three or four, but I get the feeling it might be more like seven or eight. We'll soon see. I mean, the Jersey coaching staff below us are almost stunned. They I can't believe what they've witnessed. The Kaitana red card looked like it was going to be an invitation for the Bulls to chance to strike it. Yeah. Three points. They still might get one though. Dean happy to just boot that one away and Possens can chase. That was a good touch from the goalkeeper. Farnham has really got a second wind of energy, chasing down absolutely everything. Gave Watson no time at all there. Again, it's pumped forward to Postance, but of course, not quite the same effect as Shamal Edwards in those situations. I mean, it is loud out there. Everyone barking instructions at each other. Yeah, Farnham needs to manage the game here. It's 45 minutes have been played. We're looking at added time now. Waters wins the header, and it's a great touch from Lidl. And uh, where's he off to? Just looking to keep possession, win a free kick maybe, actually loses out in the end. Roche, forward it goes from him, but Meaton, as he has done all night. He's been fantastic, Max Meaton. He's not given Lorne Bickley a sniff. Aaron Dean goes up to win the header. Waters, who has also been fantastic since he came on. Been a lease of life for that final midfield which struggled in the first half. That's a good turn there by Trotter. Chance here. And a nice turn by Cavallio, and I think Waters was happy to take the yellow card there. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely oh, he's, not, he, he's not been carded, I can't believe it. Yeah, that's a, that's a real surprise. The keeper's coming up. Wow. Goalie's going up. Well, this is like a cup final. We don't know how many minutes have been added on. It's towards him. And Ryan Kinane. But it's a corner. And the keeper. Wow, they're leaving him up there. Wow, forward. they're desperate. They're desperate for the for the for the for the point. Fair play. 
It's exciting. It's like cup final football in the league in February. <laughs> in it comes. Still there to be won. Farnham get it away. Farnham to get up. They need to get up. Here's Lloyd. And Roche. Done well. Out wide it goes. Cavallo on the right flank now. In it comes left footed. Straight to Jackson, who almost got himself into a tangle there. In the end, it's a throw. It's the first piece of pressure that Farnham have had against them all second half. Yes. They just need to ride it. They just need to ride it. JJ Lloyd. Probably going to loft this one into the danger zone. In it comes. It's away. But Jersey will come again here. Lloyd again. Jersey just trying to work a shooting opportunity. Done well. Farnham can't get it away. Waters got rid of it. Done well. Gets it away. Let's go, let's go. Lloyd again. And again. Let's go, chase it down. Waters. <laughs> and out of play. We've had three minutes of added time. And Jersey. That was a very, very inexperienced piece of play for number two. That was very, very inexperienced. He, he's wasted more time by doing what he was trying to do. I think he's just said we're in the last minute. Adam Little, if he can just drive, keep the ball here. Doesn't want to give away a foul. Actually on a booking himself, and that from Trotter. Brilliant from Pat Nash, brilliant from Pat Nash. Was wasteful, and Nash goes down. Love it. And have Farnham seen this one out. The, the circumstances in which they look like they've secured this victory, you couldn't, it's the most overused line in football, but you could not have scripted it. It's been, it's been a brilliant game of football that nearly 800 people have watched online. Harry Cooksey wanted a whistle there. Oh, that's a lovely flick. And there he is, yes! the final whistle. Farnham Town's run goes on. 24 wins, and they've had to work hard for it tonight. Adversity they responded to with a moment of magic from Owen Dean to win the penalty, which Harry Cooksey, the man of the moment, with the penalty with five minutes to go, wins it for Farnham. It's 1-0 again. They're becoming the 1-0 machines. It's finished here, Farnham Town 1, Jersey Bulls 0. What a football match. It felt like a cup final, and it mattered to both teams so very much. Jersey will be gutted again on that plane tomorrow morning because they worked hard, they battled, they defended really well. But ultimately, Farnham knocked on the door, knocked on the door, and then blew it down right at the end with a Harry Cooksey penalty, as we've seen so many times this season. Cooksey gets us out of jail, and it's 24 wins out of 24 games. Brilliant from Farnham Town. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been a pleasure, as it always, always is. Do drop a subscribe on your way back, um, and hopefully we'll see you another time, be it virtually or down here at the Memorial Ground. See you soon.